Uh, it's uncertain. There was a report that came out last year that suggested that about 50,000 Canadians have traveled internationally seeking medical services abroad. So um, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is what are the numbers of people coming to Canada seeking services. Uh, but 50,000 seems to be the most accurate measurement so far. Is it a problem? Well, that's another issue entirely. Depends what you mean by problem. I like to look at this from a values perspective. How do we conceptualize the issue? Uh, what do we learn from it? Why are people traveling abroad to seek services? Often they're traveling abroad because they can't get the services that they want or need here in a timely fashion. And if that's the case, it may suggest that there is something broken in our system that is not servicing taxpayers who have already invested in our medical health care system. So in that sense, it is a problem. We are not servicing the stakeholders who need to be serviced. On a, a wider ethical uh, perspective, it can be argued that those seeking services abroad are not contributing their wealth, their resources locally. And it could also be argued that uh, if we are offering services to those abroad, we are not giving those same services to those here. So the, uh, the issue of waiting times often pops up. Um, that's one of the indicators by which you measure the robustness and responsiveness of a healthcare system. And Canada, though we are proud of our universal healthcare system, and rightly so, is an expensive system, is one of the more expensive ones in the world, and it suffers in terms of waiting times. Often we're criticized on, on that point. And one of the reasons people travel abroad is to overcome that issue of waiting times. Lately, it became known, at least in Ontario, that several of our hospitals are offering services to people abroad uh, as a way to increase revenue locally. And the argument that's been given to support that practice is that the income, the revenue coming from those traveling to Canada to seek services, is being used to uh, service or to overcome some of the costs that Canadians incur by seeking care. However, it's a bit anti-intuitive. So we have a waiting time issue, and yet we are giving priority in some services to those coming from abroad. So it's a complicated soup of, uh, of factors involving values, economics, and other things. And it'll be fascinating to see where we go as a nation the next couple of years around this, because how we tackle the issue of medical tourism ultimately will inform how we think about some of the wider values-based issues in Canadian policy. Okay, what sort of laws and practices govern how medical tourism works? Medical tourism is a wide field and it subtends, subtends several practices. I specialize in what's called reproductive tourism. That's when people travel abroad seeking reproductive technologies in particular. And uh, there are no laws per se that prevent you from doing so. Um, but one of the reasons people travel abroad to seek these services is that the laws locally are somewhat restrictive depending upon your perspective. So you're not allowed to, for example, pay for sperm or eggs or a surrogate mother. And if you want to do these things, you go abroad to do that, to circumvent some of the laws, legal strictures here. Or if you wish to do some things like select the sex of your baby, which is illegal in Canada, you can do so in some other countries. So there is no law per se that prevents you from seeking these services abroad. However, the domestic laws may be a factor compelling the action of going abroad. Right, so who is likely to travel for medical tourist services? That's a complicated question. It depends, again, on the kind of medical tourism we're talking about. But in general, the motivators include uh, getting services cheaper, getting services faster, and getting services that maybe aren't available locally. So to be really uh, uh, inciting here, consider if you need an organ transplant to save your life. You can get on the altruistic list of organ donors here, or you can go to a foreign country, I won't say which ones, and maybe purchase an organ from someone else. Right? So uh, that sort of behavior is considered probably unethical in Canada, but if your life's depending on it, you may want to short circus this process and go abroad to do so. Uh, or, on the other side of the spectrum, there are people who maybe want quick services to uh, bypass a waiting list for things that aren't life-threatening, and maybe in a more enjoyable fashion. If you can go to a tropical country, lay on a beach, get your knee surgery or your nose job done there, 
why not do that rather than wait in line here in cold Canada uh, and maybe wait several months to do so. Uh, we don't know really why people go abroad except for uh, subpopulations we've looked at. So as a general trend, there are many factors that compel people to do so.